What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today I'm really really excited to bring you this episode because I've finally gone ahead and built some awesome little robot systems in Scrap Mechanic. Back when I used to work in the real world, I spent a fair number of years working in robotics and in doing so you learn a lot about how robotic systems work and the one thing I've always wanted to do in Scrap Mechanic is make a robot that's controlled by an XYZ coordinate system and allows you to program different steps into the robot and have it execute those steps automatically on its own and sort of proceed from point to point and do all sorts of cool stuff and we finally got that here today in this awesome little robot system here so this robot is a three axis robot and you can see it's actually a self-contained unit so we've got it on this nice tile background here just so we can see the coordinates and then it's got this sort of white little base as well as all the stepper motors and an rc connection so it receives all its information remote controlled and it's done with just four connections one for each of the individual motors so you can see it'll rotate about this center point here as well as have a piston that can extend the whole thing up and down and then this piston here can extend it outwards from the center point and finally we've got another rotation point on the very end piece here and so we send this robot whatever signals we want and by doing that we can have it move around on this massive tile platform now the robot is not allowed to move close to its base so it's not allowed to move within this white square it'll only move outside of it but of course you're going to wonder well how do we control this robot and that is using this system here so this is a two-part system this system on the bottom is a universal modular system that i'm going to be using for many different robots. I've actually given this thing the name of the Modular Universal Robotic Integrated Control Apparatus, or Murica for short, and uh, it's a great system. You can see we've got a single point here, and it's a self-contained unit. It's a little bit aggressive, but it allows you to program all these different pieces of information into the robotic memory system, as well as execute them using this time stepper system over here. So you can create a program, you can customize your program, you can record your program, and then you can run your program automatically. So it's kind of like a controller, but with a ton of information. So it's actually got XYZ, for uh, three coordinate positions, as well as RX, RY, RZ, which would be your rotations. So at the very end of the robot hand, you want to be able to rotate it about any axis you want. So that's RX, RY, RZ. And then it's got this S as well, which I've left for a sort of special function. Uh, you can use it for speed. You could use it for if you had like a grabbing arm, you could have it send a one or a zero if you want it to be grabbed or not grabbed. But you could do whatever you want with this. This robot, for example, has fixed speeds on all the motors. So the motors all move at a constant speed and you can't change that. But uh, you can change the time between each step interval. So this is a really, really cool system that then passes information to this specifics robot controller. So this module here is the actual specific controller for that robot. And you can see the only things connecting these two modules are these four connections here. So every time we feed an XYZ and RZ position to this module, it actually goes ahead, takes those, verifies that the information we've sent is giving us a position outside of this grid. If it doesn't give us a position outside of this grid, the robot goes back to this default rest position. Like I said, you can't bring the robot too close to itself. Obviously, just with the way it's configured, it can't get within that white square. So if you do tell it to go within that white square, which is actually three in every direction, a block distance of three, then it will go back and it'll say, nope, can't do it. Go back to rest position and wait for a proper command. And then, of course, it does a bunch of math here. This is some crazy, awesome Cartesian math. It does some sines, cosines, and all that. Well, actually, it just does a cosine here. But anyways, it does some Cartesian math to figure out what angles it needs to be at and then sends all that information out. And of course, you're probably wondering, well, what does this actually look like? And uh, really simply, we'll just run a basic program I've got set up here. So we can press the blue button and uh, we've got a program program into all these memory blocks. And if we hit the green switch, you can see it starts stepping through these steps. And we've got a set of 15 steps. So every 15 steps, it will go to the next. Each step is two ticks long. So you can kind of figure it out. You can uh, set it to go to like one step. Every one step, so it'll go faster. But you can see we've got a fair amount of delay. And this robot is actually moving through every single coordinate we tell it to go to. So we're giving it coordinates in X, Y, Z, which don't come up here. They're actually stored in the memory blocks. But it's going through a pre-positioned X, Y, Z coordinate system that we've actually given it. And you can see every time it will line up perfectly with one of these grid squares. You can do, in fact, decimal coordinates as well. It doesn't care. You can give it like 0.5. 0.1 whatever you can give it literally any number you want and the robot will step through these and of course we can put a chair on this as well 
and uh, we'll just, you know, we can repeat that whole sequence. Now, this robot, based on the fact that it's got a 15 long piston that extends out, it has a maximum reach of 12 by 12. So it can't go further than 12, 12 if you go X, Y. It kind of makes a big circle, if you can imagine. If you give it a coordinate that's outside of its reach, it will try to get there, but obviously it can only extend the piston so far. So it can only really get to, you know, 12 by 12. But you can see, we're gonna go through all these steps really simply. And then when it's done, we can bring it back. It'll go back to that zero. And you can see it actually will go and stop itself automatically. So you can see step 10 has an actual zero time interval. And that's actually the trigger to stop the whole system. So as soon as you give it a zero time step, it's uh, completely done and there's nothing you can do about it. But we'll switch over from the playback mode. So we'll turn off this blue switch. We can turn on this yellow switch. Now this allows us to just use these coordinates to sort of set all our initial positions. And it's really, really cool. So you can see we're currently at Y equals three, X equals zero. Now the X axis, is this horizontal line here and the y-axis is this line in front of the robot of course we could completely cut this robot off the base we just have it on this base for sort of like a, a simple reference but you can see if we put a block pillar here it's perfectly lined up with that block pillar and this is in fact at y equals one two three and x equals zero right along that center line so pretty good stuff so we're definitely perfectly lined up with that and now of course if we move to x equals three y equals three it should move us to be perfectly lined up with this diagonal here, which you can see it does, in fact, line up the manipulator. And then, of course, we can give it a rotation in Z. So uh, let's go RZ here. Let's set this to 90 degrees. And uh, it should, if we set this to 90, rotate the arm. And you can see they're perfect. It's rotated us in this direction. So it's really, really cool stuff. And it's really simple math. And no matter what position we tell it to go to, whether it's a half position, a full position, or, you know, any position in between, it's uh, it's absolutely perfect. It will always line up and the math will always work even though we're using a rotation joint and a couple of pistons. Now I realized in that sequence we didn't do anything with the extending up. So let's actually run through the sequence again. You can see if we turn off this yellow switch, it instantly goes back to that zero position. This is sort of our manual setup switch and we can do this and uh, then we can record some points. But let's let it run through the sequence again. So we'll turn it on playback mode and uh, we'll just run the ticker and let it tick through to the end sequence. And then we'll add some height commands into uh, this thing at the end for some of the extra points. But really simple stuff. And I've just programmed this one to do something very, very basic. Uh, it just moves around. It's not really much of a robot. You can't actually have any special functions on this one. It doesn't have any receiver to receive the special input. So you couldn't even put like a grabber on the end of this unless I guess... I, I mean, I guess you could put the receiver right on the end manipulator and have it custom like that. But it's a really, really basic robot. And I just wanted to show how you can convert, you know, basic X, Y, Z coordinates into a proper rotational system. And it works perfectly every time. It's absolutely awesome. So there we go. We're at the last step. So we're at step 10, which is an empty step here. We've got a time step of zero. And uh, we'll speed this up a bit. So we're going to set the time steps to be 10 from now on between each uh, each stage instead of 15. Now we'll put it onto uh, our playback mode so we can see. And um, we ended pretty much right in front of it. I like that position, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just actually go maybe a little bit less of an angle, 40 degrees, something like that, perfect. And uh, let's go up in Z because we haven't done any of that. So let's go up off one, off two, off three, and there we go. So we're at that position there. And uh, we'll record that point. Oh, no, I want to turn off playback. And we'll step to the next point. Perfect. So we go to 11. And uh, now we're on to point 11. This black memory bit records the time step, which is currently set to 10. That's what this button kind of allows us to do. This shows us the time step of the current stepper system. And uh, the black one just stores whatever it was on this uh, on this setter here. So we've got this one set to 10. The red 3 store your XYZ. The green three store your RX, RY, RZ, and S is purple, which stores your special command. And then, of course, we have all these points, which really just let us set everything, and uh, everything passes through on this plus sign here. So if you want to hook this up to any robot system, you just connect the Murica board to any other robot, and uh, this will control that, and it works quite wonderfully. So we've got this one set. Now let's sell it to go to a different position. Uh, maybe let's give it, like, you know, all the way across... So that's a pretty good position. We can tick down this way and uh, let's go down a few like that. But let's go up more in Z. There we go. And uh, let's actually reset ourselves to be at zero rotation. And we'll record this as point 11. Perfect. And then we'll step ourselves ahead in the memory index. Uh, and then we'll go up a few more points. Again, this robot doesn't really have a task to do. 
But, uh, you know, it's going to be just sort of running around doing aimless points. We'll set this to go to 90 again. So we're facing out that way. That looks great. You know what? Let's put a seat on the end of this as well because we'll definitely be riding this later. Now, the coordinate system is based on this pipe piece right here. It's not based on your seat. So if you do have any sort of end piece on it, you'll have to count for that. Now, in real life, robots use an offset to account for that. So we could actually account for a coordinate system that's not here, but is actually extended out here. And if I make a different robot with like an actual grabbing hand, I'll probably program that into this section of the circuit. But for now, for this one, I just wanted to show that we can actually take an XYZ coordinate system, feed it out to another control board, and then in turn feed that out to a robot arm. And we can have this robot arm go through literally infinite steps. We could These memory blocks allow you to set up as many steps as you want, I believe. I don't think there's a limit to them. And uh, it's absolutely awesome. So it's like having a controller, but just a crazy customizable controller that lets you not only customize the speed, the, you know, distance, whatever, but it lets you do it all at the same time or in different steps. You could have a step where one stays the same and the others move, for example. You do all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, coordinate 12 is currently empty. We'll record that. I don't know if that's a repeat or not, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh, let's go up to max height, which is 15. And uh, perfect, we'll go to 12 and we'll go, I don't know where we are, X0, that looks great. We'll record that. All right, now we're gonna set our rotation to zero for this last point, so we're rotating back straight. Again, the robot also doesn't check the limit of smashing itself. So we've got this toilet on the end, the toilet extends. The robot only cares that this little pipe piece is outside of the white box of three by three coordinate systems. So if the robot is told to go here and turn the chair inwards, it'll smash itself. So you got to just be aware of that when you're recording your points, which is kind of similar to real life. I mean, if you put an end piece on the robot, you have to program all the limits into it so the robot understands where it's not allowed to go. And that's kind of, you know, up to the human. So you could make a really dumb robot, but this is exactly like the kind of robots that I used to use, except the ones I dealt with were six axis, so they did a bunch of rotation joints. And ideally, I am going to use this system to make a fully functional six axis robot, which can pick up objects, move them around, and do some crazy automated stuff, which I'm super excited about. Now, of course, this does use the mod pack to get these stepper motors, but I think it's an awesome system. The cool thing about this, and the really, really exciting thing about this for me, is the fact that this robot is super dumb. This robot has no thinking for itself. All the AI we make at this point, they use sensors. So they're technically smarter than this thing. This thing doesn't have any sensors at all. It literally just receives commands from these two boards and it goes to whatever position the boards tell it to go to. It's the dumbest possible robot, but it's absolutely awesome. And it's only possible with these smart engines from the mod pack because we can tell it, I want you to rotate this bearing to exactly this angle. I want this one at exactly that angle. I want these pistons at exactly the correct length. And that allows us to control everything we want to a perfect Cartesian coordinate system. And I absolutely love it. I think it's the coolest thing in the world. It's a really, really great system. I, I just absolutely love it. And I hope you guys too. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna include this on the workshop. I do wanna upload it to the workshop but uh, it's a little bit complicated to understand how it all uses. And of course, the buttons, you kind of paint them to change the numbers. You'll notice we're painting them. And as we paint them with the different colors, it changes the values based on the mod pack. So it's a little bit confusing, but I would like to upload it to the workshop just so people can check it out. Like I said, I will be making other robots so I can have one of these boards go to any different one of these boards. So this board here pairs with that robot, but I am gonna make other boards pair with other robots. And I think it's just absolutely awesome. So we've got our final point here, point 18, which means our robot will stop on point 19. Now we can just hit this green switch. Uh, we can paint this white to reset the steppers to zero. So we're at zero memory index. And if we press green with the blue enabled, it should go through the pre-programmed positions. So here we go, blue's enabled. And we'll go there and we should move through the system once it steps. There we go. Nice step there. Again, we've got a bunch of 15 steps in the beginning and then we go to a bunch of 10 steps. But uh, that's a great position there. Perfect. You can just see the precision of the robot too. Every movement it does is absolutely perfect. It's exactly matched to where you recorded the position and it'll always do that every time you do it. It's absolutely awesome. I love these smart engines. You could do this in vanilla. However... If you want to do this in vanilla, you need electric motors and you also need sensors to measure the position where every motor is at. The beautiful thing with these smart engines from the mod pack 
is that they actually will go to the perfect position every time. And so you can do small compact robots like this that move through the positions. Now we're going through all the positions we've done before now. New rec that's awesome. Look at this with the height. That's great. We're just we're just flipping around here. Now we should flip. Oh, okay. We're yeah, no, that's great. This way, perfect. Now, of course, the rotation of the arm, it's going to rotate in whatever direction gets it to the angle fastest. And there we go. I think we're done with those steps. The robot's gone back to the rest position. So we can loop that through again. But like I said, the robot will rotate in the fastest way possible. So we're having it rotate around its base in the counterclockwise direction. And if we wanted it to rotate in the clockwise direction, we could do that as well. But it's going to pick the direction that's faster based on the angle. So if you have it going from 0 to 180 degrees, it'll probably just pick whatever direction it feels like. And you'll want to make sure that if you want it to go in a specific rotation or through specific steps, you program enough intermittent steps to actually make that happen. But regardless, I think this is a really, 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 really cool system. I'm so excited to be programming robots in Scrap Mechanic. And I think now with this universal robotic controller, the possibilities are endless. Making those extra little modules are just specific to the robot. It's super easy to do. And you just kind of have to work out the math on paper a little bit. But once you've got the math figured out, you can make any robot go to any sort of Cartesian coordinate system. And we can do this for any number of things and make just an awesome robotic control system. So I'm super, super excited about it. I hope you guys are too. And I hope you guys let me know in the comments what you think of this robot and what other kind of robots you'd like to see. I spent most of my time and most of my career before YouTube working with automotive robots and that's sort of where I got the inspiration to do this but now that we've got a universal controller I can't wait to make all sorts of cool different robots and they don't have to be robots that are like an arm type system necessarily you can do XYZ stuff RZ RX RY all that with other systems as well so I will definitely be building more of these and I hope you guys check it out I really really think it's awesome and uh, it's just such a cool cool system but of course let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and while you're at it hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time